So welcome everyone to Wellness Exchange. In today's episodes, we are going to dwell on the latest medical advancement in migraine management in India. And joining us today is Dr. Dhaval Narang, a esteemed expert in neurology at Avadh Hospital in Lucknow to discuss the evolving landscape of migraine treatment and care. So first of all, welcome uh, Dr. Dhaval and thank you so much for taking out time for this podcast. Thank you, Arjit, for welcoming me to your beautiful podcast. Hopefully, the session will be helpful to everyone. Yeah, I hope so, because uh, I was going through this recent uh, study while preparing for this podcast, and there's a general law of headache and pain in 2019, which estimates the prevalence of migraine in India has gone up to 8.4%, and it impacts the quality of life as well as the productivity of an individual. And I've also seen it personally in my extended family uh, that, you know, it not only impacts a person who's getting affected by this, but also the surrounding ecosystem and the entire family members. So thank you so much for uh, uh, taking time out and giving us some feedback on this important topic. Thank you. Uh, I want to emphasize on one point, like all these studies, especially in India, they are grossly underestimating the prevalence of migraine. Migraine is not just 8.4 percent. Madhav, sometimes it feels like like every one in three people or every one in two people are suffering from migraine. The only thing is the headache frequency is so very less and the severity is so very less. Some people might get headache like once in a month. Some might get once in a year. Some might not get even headache also. They may get some heaviness in the head and they will attribute it but actually it would be migraine so, so what the you're frequency saying, is very high so what you are saying is the surveys or the studies that we have they are grossly underestimating the number of people who are actually affected in india by the migraine yeah that is just tip of the iceberg this indicates just that number in whom the migraine is severe enough to seek medical attention or those people who can actually seek medical attention. Like this is also one point we talk about, especially in our country, like 70% of the population do not even seek medical attention. They do not have the means to do so, or they do not have specialists in their area. Right. So what do you think as a, as a medical you know, industry or as a healthcare industry, we all can contribute in you know what you said and what you raised is a very important point that so many people don't have access to healthcare. So let alone the bigger problems, this is, many people consider headaches and migraine as a very, you know, uh, not even a serious issue at, uh, at many times. And ultimately it boils up to something bigger. Yeah, typically migraine is not a very serious issue by itself. The problem with migraine is like so many people have it and so many people don't seek treatment they that actually leads to loss of productivity imagine like you are going to work for 25 days in a month okay in 25 days in a month suppose there is a daily wage laborer who gets like 100 rupees or 500 rupees per day and he doesn't go to work two days in a month because of headache like that is just a headache it is not a very serious thing but because of that headache that person is not able to work. Even if it is only for two days in a month or three days in a month, that has profound implications for the patient and his, fa and his family. What we can do is, or what we have to do is to raise awareness. What is migraine and who do we seek treatment and who actually benefits from the treatment? It is like a, for simple migraines, even a general practitioner can treat if they are aware. Mm. So, Dr. Narayan, that brings me to a very important question. So, let's begin from the beginning, if we may. Uh, that, you know, a lot of our listeners and a lot of our viewers, they are going to be, you know, people who, because the video is going to go up on our social domain, so it might go and reach up to the people who are not from a medical background or who are not, you know, who are just entering the medical uh, space, so to say. So, if simply put, for a layman like me, uh, what is a migraine and what are the unique factors which contribute to you know the prevalence of migraine, especially when we talk about the Indian context? 
let uh, let me started by saying uh for a general uh, general person the problem is not migraine for a general person the problem is headache like i am getting headache i am not getting migraine migraine is diagnosed by a specialist okay if i get headache i immediately have to visit a specialist the specialist then decides what type of headache is it is it a primary headache or is it a secondary headache secondary headache simply means the headache is because of something else maybe he has a sinus infection maybe he has some kind of fever or whatever the primary headaches are those headaches which people just get and actually there is no underlying cause one of those is migraine so the first thing which uh, we should keep in mind when we get headache is we should visit a specialist the first and the foremost thing is to actually get diagnosed that is the first step towards being treated like the treatment can only get started if we get diagnosed only then can we can start the patient on the correct treatment so i can say take away one is don't take your headaches lightly any one of our viewers and if you must uh, you know want to get rid of it it's important that if especially if you are getting it regularly to visit a specialist and find out if there's any under you know underlying cause like migraine for that headache or is it because of some other condition absolutely the first and the foremost thing is as you said to not take your headache lightly even if you are getting like twice or thrice in a month it could always point to some underlying serious disease the first point is to get diagnosed so the treatment can be started and do not think like some people are not just very reluctant to go to a specialist citing like if we go to a specialist he is going to take so much money let us just take a some paracetamol or something and the yeah. headache gets relieved but i am telling you again quoting the previous example i gave earlier even if you are missing like two or three days in a month of work because because of headache trust me the amount the money that you will lose and your family will lose and that is definitely going to be worth much more than what you are going to pay to the specialist and not just for one month because it is going to stay with you for a long time till you are getting treated so let us not hesitate let us not take our headaches lightly first thing is to get diagnosed it is a very common thing it is very easy to treat the most important thing is just get diagnosed one more thing i would like to add all migraine is not headache like all headache is not migraine all migraine is also not headache it is not true that if there is migraine migraine has to be headache migraine has to be like in the half of the head that is true that half hemigranial headache headache in one side of a uh, head is usually a migraine but that does not mean ki all migraine is just strictly localized to one side of the head there are many kinds of migraine let me tell you without going into much detail there is a type of migraine that is that even does not have headache at all okay that's the patient will ha huh, the patient will just say i am uh, i am feeling like i am feeling like gas i am feeling nauseous i don't want to eat and plenty of other things just they attribute it to being tired but it occurs like every once in a while every once in 15 days or once in a week or twice in a week maybe sometimes without any apparent reason also that can also be migraine that it is seen especially in some young children like a boy comes to me 5 or 6 years old the only complaint his parents have is doctor saab ye inko na har 15 din mein har hafte har 10 din mein na ek do bar vomiting zarur aati hai kabhi hame bhi samajhte nahi aata ekdam se dull ho jata hai khata pita nahi hai vomiting karna shuru kar deta hai kuch bolta nahi hai एक कोने में जाकर बैठ जाता है दैट इज ऑल्सो माइग्रेन द चाइल्ड इज जस्ट नॉट टेलिंग यू ही हैज हेडेक देर इज एक्चुअली अ टर्म फॉर इट इट इज कॉल्ड एज साइक्लिक वॉमिटिंग सिंड्रोम इट इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ माइग्रेन सम पीपल इवन बिफोर दे स्टार्ट हैविंग हेडेक दे स्टार्ट गेटिंग सम टिंगलिंग एंड पैरिसिया एंड नमनेस लाइक सेंसेशन इन देयर हैंड इवन देयर फीट इवन देयर देयर फेस some people complain of diminishing of vision some people complain like they are seeing flashing lights or they are seeing some zigzag lines in front of their eyes yeah. that can also be a precursor to migraine it is actually called aura okay. and that is a very characteristic feature of migraine if we are getting it 
because as you rightly said a lot of people especially the young people as well as young children what many parents have misconception is if their parent or if their uh, child is not eating food or he is not behaving in a proper certain way most of the time they just simply put it on you know not eating uh, the right food they will say that oh he is having constipation or he is been eating too much of junk food so that's why all these problems are ha happening what you are saying is breaking this uh, general misconception as these uh, symptoms could be because of the underlying migraine yes definitely this uh, these symptoms can be because of underlying migraine like one recently a patient i saw same complaints okay the parent said doctor saab he watches too much of uh, mobile phone that is why he is not eating hmm. <laughs> uh, okay okay i i get it like uh, watching too much of mobile phones all those flashing lights and all can lead to migraine but actually the diagnosis is migraine and hmm. we don't take it lightly if we if we treat it it is it has usually very good result there are so many treatments nowadays available that nobody actually has to miss a day of work because of migraine so doctor madam that brings me to my next question apart from the beyond from medications what are the modern or non pharmacological approaches that have gained traction in the management of migraine and uh, just a precursor to that question how does anyone know so for a you know a parent or a young individual watching this or even anyone watching it anywhere in india in india how do they know that okay what i am feeling or what my family member or my husband or wife is feeling it could be a uh, migraine or it could be something serious and we need to uh, you know consult a specialist like the most important point here would be the migraine headaches are more often than not they are like always cyclical they are always related to something that we that we call as a trigger right. okay some people get triggered by sunlight too much exposure to the sun can trigger too much uh, loss of sleep can trigger you have not slept at night and that can trigger a migraine the next day you have not eaten you have not got the chance to eat that can trigger migraine if your symptoms are always coming after a trigger for example i had a patient who said doctor saab whenever i have a whenever i go out in the sun and come back i never feel like eating even if it is lunch time i am not able to eat and i am always feeling nauseous sometimes also i get headache like then i explain to him see what you are getting is a migraine because you are you are out in the sunlight too much you have too much exposure to the bright light that is why you are getting a migraine and also one typical feature is that these are repetitive symptoms if a person is sick because of something like malaria dengue any other illness okay they will be sick for 2 3 days or 5 days and then they get treated okay then they are fine but migraine headaches and even all those other non headache features of migraine they come again and again you might get the same symptoms again in a week you might get get them next day you might get them next month or you may get them next year but they always repeat themselves if you have a particular set of symptoms that are particularly triggered by a trigger or they are repeating themselves sometimes without any reason okay then you should always get evaluated by a specialist for you could have migraine and you could be easily treated so simply put if i were to put it in simple uh, words what you beautifully just explained is if there's any trigger which is causing headache to you number one that would be a red flag that you need to go and see a specialist number two if your headaches are happening in a cyclic manner maybe weekly or monthly or annually or any particular cycle is there because of this and because of no other reason because of you know if you are having fever because of headache because of a fever or headache because of some other uh, sort of dengue malaria or viral infection that is not a red flag but if it is because of some trigger like going into sunlight or going into some specific set of environment like for example if you move into uh, ac room from a non ac room and that's triggering a headache or if you are getting the headaches in a cyclical manner all these could be the red marks for going yourself and getting yourself checked for the uh absolutely absolutely that is that is exactly the right takeaway from what i said now moving on to the second part of question 
मतलब यू आज यू वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट आर द नॉन फार्मोकोलॉजिकल थिंग्स और वॉट आर द मॉडर्न थिंग्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम मेडिसिन दैट वी कैन यूज इन माइग्रेन दैट नॉन फार आई वॉन्ट टू मॉडिफाई दिस स्टेटमेंट स्लाइटली दैट द नॉन फार्मोकोलॉजिकल मेथड्स ऑफ ट्रीटिंग माइग्रेन आर नॉट न्यू नॉन फार्मोकोलॉजिकल ट्रीटमेंट हैव एग्जिस्टेड इवन बिफोर द फार्मोकोलॉजिकल ट्रीटमेंट हैव अराइव the non pharmacological treatments are basically the behavioral treatments a certain amount of discipline go to sleep on time wake up on time get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep eat your meals on time do not go out into the into bright sunlight without without covering yourself or without some kind of eye protection or skin protection those are the things that we usually ask advise people to do to prevent themselves from getting migraine to we, we cannot avoid stress like theek hai stress and stress all is known to trigger migraine but in normal life it is practically impossible to avoid stress there is always some or the other thing that is always giving you tension which is beyond our control but if we impose a certain amount of discipline in our life and for mitigating stress we can do some kind of breathing exercises and some kind of yoga maybe meditation make just make a daily routine mm. and that can only prevent migraine apart from that now the coming on to the uh, latest modalities i have recently been aware of one injection a specifically specific injection that has come to our indian market that you can only take for once a month and you your headaches are gone for the entire month you do not do not get any headaches in a month but that is very expensive it costs like 20000 rupees per injection there are other methods also there is a stimulator called as vagus nerve stimulation again we can use for migraine there are other stimulators as well there is a deep brain stimulation as well but all those modalities are very expensive the cheapest and the most effective non pharmacological way of treating your migraines of preventing you from getting migraines is just to impose a certain amount of discipline in your life just make a routine and stick by it now interestingly when you say this dr narak as you would know that india is a fast developing economy now we reached i think top 5 fifth biggest economy in the world and we are planning to reach up to number 3 in by some reports say by 2030 others say by 2028 so while all of this is happening you would have seen that you know in last decade or so the lifestyle of people not only in metros but in tier 2 tier 3 cities have also changed a lot because of the boom of the internet so much of you know information which is available to everyone and so many other things which are going around so many changes for example gst implementation happened and then so on and so forth so many changes are going on so you triggered a very good point that migraines related to stress because stress is a reality in today's day gone are the days when you know people would say oh you you don't have a 10 year old or a 15 year old kid to raise why are you stressed today if you talk about a 19 year old may have his own stress reasons for his own stress or a 30 year old would have career related or family related as well so in this environment while we are changing and evolving as a country how do you think that you know uh, stress related migraine that can be managed because i know you mentioned some of the basic points uh, which would apply in this case as well like sleeping on time having a good behavior uh, having a disciplined lifestyle but in many cases dr narak you would agree that for many of us it is not possible the life along with stress be in a uh, professional or uh, you know non professional background like i said like you said the stress is inevitable stress always occurs whether you want it or you don't want it there are always some triggering factors i am not sure ki this is this is just recent but obviously in the today's fast moving life the stress is very high okay that cannot be avoided but what we can do to reduce is our reaction to stress okay what that is important how do we react to stress how do we adapt to it migrant the excessive stress or the other things are actually a sort of maladaptive behavior we have stress and we do not know what to do in that case what we can do is 
we can do these lifestyle changes only practice good sleep hygiene set consistent bed times and wake times sleep only as long as you need to feel rested avoid caffeine avoid alcohol avoid smoking before bed do not look at your phone or other devices right before bed eat he healthy meals important point healthy meals and around the same time each day so your body gets used to it even if you are stressed out you have a very busy lifestyle like maybe you can always pause for a snack get regular exercise and avoid things that may trigger a migraine now migraine triggers as i have previously mentioned they are different from each different for each individual okay everyone does not have same trigger my migraine can be triggered because of sunlight you will say boss i also have migraine but i can stay in the sunlight as long as i want but i get migraine only when i listen to loud music or when there is some loud music in my background and it is giving me a headache so the most important thing apart from lifestyle is to identify what actually is giving you the headache that is called a trigger and one thing i would like to add here is the people have people have a tendency i have a headache let's take a pill please do not do that it is not healthy to take a uh, pills without a diagnosis without a prescription because we don't know what we might be suffering from what you might think might be migraine okay i will not i may not agree there might be something else yeah that is something only a specialist can tell you the so most important you... thing is again to get diagnosed so yes that's what i was going to thrust upon so very important another mm -hmm. takeaway from our session today is do not blindly go to a chemist shop and buy over the counter pills or other medications thinking you know a lot of them are available i'm sure i'm aware you are also aware of them that people go and say oh i'm just having a headache and they keep popping those pills over and over again whenever they get a headache or you know whenever they are feeling uneasy but that ultimately does not lead to a solution unless you go to a specialist get the intervention right intervention at the right time that so that you know you are good for uh, times to come so dr narang that also brings me to a very important question while uh, just discussing with you i realize there are few people in my extended family especially females who have had this issue one was diagnosed with migraine and the other i'm just you know assuming by the symptoms or you know triggers that you thought was about that they might be suffering from migraine one was a case of a uh, you know uh, confirmed migraine now apart from the patient the condition of a severe headache it might the worst part is you don't know when it's going to happen when is that trigger going to come so leave aside the patient even the family i mean obviously it is very difficult for the patient as well but the family is also ill prepared for it you might have something important coming up or you might have you know some occasion or you might have a daily routine or a discipline of a house going on and when this trigger uh, kicks into a patient it not only affects the patient but also the entire you know surrounding or the entire family so what are your suggestions to such people again assuming uh, we have gone over my last point and we have gotten diagnosed yes this is migraine only and that is nothing else Yeah. now the treatment of migraine is divided into two very important parts first is first and foremost is the abortive treatment you have had a headache and now we have taken a medicine to treat that headache but a more important part is the concept of preventive treatment of migraine we have medicines available that if we give a to a patient diagnosed with migraine okay as long as they are taking those medications they will not have a headache they will not have migraine that is the concept of preventive treatment we know that there is a patient who is prone to get headaches and the trigger is also unavoidable like travel gives them headache but you have to travel for some issue there is a work related thing or whatever okay you are going to get a headache but i am giving you a treatment like if you are taking this medicine you will not get a headache 
ठीक है दिस प्रिवेंटिव ट्रीटमेंट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द यूजल पेन किलर और द अबोटिव ट्रीटमेंट इन दैट दे आर नॉट एक्चुअली पेन किलर दे डू नॉट वर्क ऑन पेन बट दे प्रिवेंट माइग्रेन फ्रॉम हैपनिंग दे आर नॉट Uh, that they are not treatment. They are not cure. They are preventives. And right. as the saying goes, the prevention is always better than cure. Yeah. So they basically work on, uh, you know, blocking the root cause via headache or via migraine. What happened? So very well put out, Doctor Mahan, that prevention is always better than cure. And I'm sure it is. especially for all those viewers or all those people who are suffering from it their family members you've given us excellent advice here and given us a lot of insights on what migraine is and how you know what should be the red flags what behavioral changes we need to make in our lifestyle especially from when you said you know a lot of young people or young kids are having it these days so it's becoming a very very serious issue so just one last question before no flagging at all are there any uh, programs or any educational resources which is available out there for the public to you know make them aware about whatever information i mean you have given us today i'm sure i wasn't even aware or uh, you know half of it before the session so and i as you know i come from a medical sort of pharmacological background so i'm just wondering you know the 140 crore people that we have in india they also need to be because it is not a joke it is a serious issue we think about headache and we take it very lightly we take over the counter pills and you know just move on with the life but the discussion that we have it's very thought provoking that migraine is actually you know a bigger challenge a more serious problem than most of us take it for so are there any educational resources or uh, any word of advice from you for the awareness of people in general relating to this like uh, avijit we are today we are living in an age of information overload there is no there is no absence of information we do not have to go anywhere to access information the problem is that we have too much information you type migraine in google and just we... see and see what pops up there is there's so many things that you can just used to read about migraine the important thing is and i would like to stress on it again is not to read too much about it yeah. okay it doesn't it doesn't matter whatever you whatever a uh, general person reads about it it doesn't matter how much you read about it the more you read about the better it is usually but the thing is to first just know ke what problem you might be suffering from the second is not to ignore your symptoms the symptoms might be something serious or the symptoms might be benign we just don't know and the third thing is if you think you have something problematic which is not getting solved easily without medicine go to a specialist so as you rightly said i think too much of information overload is there and i was going to just say when i ask you this question i got answer in my head that you know whenever <laughs> as a end patient or a end customer you look on the google a smallest of the thing would lead you to somewhere you know very big which might you know create even more stress in your head so the best advice is to go seek your specialist and do not do not take just go over counter medicines or you know just try things from nani dani nuske in this case absolutely absolutely that should be the if there is a, supposed to be one take away from this podcast today's episode like the one take away i want it to be do not underestimate your symptoms and always get diagnosed if you have a problem right. do not take just just take medicines without just knowing without even testing or without anything yeah that's a great take away dr nagan and i'm sure that it will help it will help all of us who are listening to this podcast and hopefully we'll all spread out this information and from i'll try from my organization as well whatever word of you know uh, mouth we can use or whatever instruments we can use to pass on the information to the end customer especially relating to taking it lightly forgetting the 
you know, uh, letting off go the triggers and just popping up over the counter pills for something like migraine and the importance of going and seeing a specialist for this, be it kids or be it adults. So thank you so much, Dr. Naran, for your valuable time, sparing out your uh, time, especially on a Sunday while you're busy schedule at our hospital. Thank you so much for your uh, inputs. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me today, Abhijit.